Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my ultimate daily car challenge. What I aim to bring with this challenge is kind of bring attention to all the super cool and underrated cars that are actually existing in our motor world. Yes, we all have the cars that we like, which is the Audis, the BMWs, the AMGs, the Porsches, the Jaguars, all those super cool cars. But what about cars? that we see every single day and we don't even know that they're fun to drive. So what I kind of aim to bring with this series is the idea of taking these regular looking cars and really exploring them and bringing them to your attention that you don't have to break a bank to have something fun to drive every day. So what this first guest on our list is, is a 2015 Focus SE with a five-speed manual transmission that boasts 160 horsepower, 148 pounds of torque, and is almost as much fun as an ST or an RS. So without further ado, let me bring you closer to this underrated gem to see what it's all about. So when Ford came out with these in 2015, you were able to get these in three different flavors. The first flavor being here, which is a two liter five-speed manual transmission car, boasting around 160 horsepower, 148 uh, pound-feet of torque. You could also get the same cylinder size engine, but also with a dry dual clutch automatic. Then there was a third flavor, which was a one liter, three cylinder, 123 horsepower engine, but that one came with a six-speed manual transmission. But somewhere around 2013, 14, Ford started to have problems with their wonderful uh, six-speed dual clutch transmission. What ended up happening is the dry system really messed with the clutches, which ended up costing Ford millions upon millions of dollars and actually a class action lawsuit that I believe was settled around 2019. So as you guys can tell, this is not the most luxurious place to be in, okay? Let me just start off first with the good stuff about this car. What I really like and the first and foremost, the most important thing would be the placement of your hand where it rests um, according to the manual transmission shift knob. So the placement for your elbow is very nice. You, it does have a very good uh, resting position to, to go up, down, you know, third, fourth, and then fifth. It feels very, very nice. But as it pertains to like the steering wheel, the steering wheel is terrible. You really would have to upgrade to, uh, I think an SEL or a titanium package for this interior to be a little bit better. The, the leather the leather package that comes in these cars does give you a leather steering wheel and does give you a lot more and better options and it makes it less plasticky in here because of the you know the leather steering wheel and then the better seats also this is their very base version of their sync stereo system quote unquote infotainment the only thing that this comes with is a backup camera which is pretty handy because you can like zoom into it so it's super nice the better version of this comes with the Sony system, which I believe has the Sync 2 or 3. Don't quote me on that. But it does give you like access to apps, you know, better sound system, so on and so forth. But the neat part about this is that if you were by any chance wanting to, you know, upgrade some parts, let's say from an ST, RS even, you're able to like swap out the steering wheels because for the most part, a lot of these parts between the STs, RSs, and all the other focuses are interchangeable. But check this out. This is for all my guys and gals that are over six feet or even want to have the true racing position even in their daily because the neat part about this car is you can go all the way down to the ground literally you can go all the way down i am still going so this is the neat part is that the wheel telescopes up and down you can push it in i had it pulled out fully but it, there is some movement so there was a lot of emphasis on this car being sporty but also comfortable what a lot of also people don't know about this car is that this car was actually designed in europe by Germans and British for the European market. So what, essentially what we're getting is an European car for America, which is really cool and I didn't really know that. So it's a cool little fact. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room, the ST and the RS versions of these cars. The RS version obviously is being much, much, much more expensive than this one, but the ST version of this car, some people may say that it's very close to price in these. You can have most likely one of these for anywhere from five to eight grand. They're not that expensive. And the nice part about these cars is that most likely they have not been beat on as much as their ST and RS counterparts. So yes, I know the better versions of this car exist, but this is the best and the cheapest and the most reliable option. Okay guys, let's take this baby on the road and show you how she drives. Because let's face it, 
This is not the most prettiest car, but where it really shines is on the road. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the quick run. Uh, show you how she sounds and how she drives. So check this out. Also, please make sure to turn up your headphones or put headphones in as this is a binaural video. Okay, we're gonna get some distance between so I can showcase the handling. Um, the handling's actually really nice, it's kinda light, but yeah. Okay, so there's not much traffic, so we're gonna do one quick little pass around. But yeah, she drives really nice. The only downsides I would say about this car is that it really is that it really is steering is a little bit too light uh, for my liking so if you guys are interested in so I'd highly suggest 12 13 and 14 years as they have hydraulic steering and those may feel a little bit more um, this is still a very good steering rack although I would prefer a hydraulic one a little more feel but nonetheless a fantastic one between like sporty driving and fun Okay, so this is the run over here. Shift a second, blip. Kinda not good, but she is holding very, very well. There's a little bit of lean. Steering is very light. Overall, this car is very, very nice. Uh, it's very comfy. I highly recommend it, as I've mentioned, um, to anybody that wants something that's daily drivable, that's fun, um, that's very good on gas. Um, 
to be honest with you guys, I've been romping on this thing left and right, and I mean, I can't, I can't complain. It is, it is, it is very, very good. It's very fun. I highly recommend it. There's definitely a lot of, there's definitely a lot of mods you can get for these cars. They do have turbo kits for the regular focuses too, which is pretty cool. It's brought to you guys by Focus Power. They specialize in regular focuses and just, you know, making them really cool. So I highly recommend that or check them out if you guys have a focus already and, and you know, want to explore a little bit more. But here we go, 20 downshift, second blip, let's go. No problem. A little bit of lean, third. Oh, it's oversteering. It's it's. I can feel it moving. All right. Definitely needs a little bit of mods in terms of handling. Just to just to give that little bit of an edge here. As I've mentioned, a sway bar, probably a little bit better tires, and this car is gonna be perfect. Shifting, super crispy, this five speed is amazing. Just enough power to move around the city when you need to without switching gears too many times and perfect amount to have fun in. To, to end it here, I do think this is definitely an ultimate sleeper. Really fun car to drive, really recommend it. It's easy to run, 87 gas, you can even put E85 in it if you want. And, and go from there. So without further ado guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe